Beware of the politician who throws open his arms of welcome. You know it can't be good. You know it is a wolf. You know it has teeth just waiting to bite into your soft underbelly. That is the feeling I get when reading the federal government's response to the Productivity Commission's inquiry into regulation of the Australian marine fisheries and aquaculture sectors. You see, the states control all fisheries from the high water mark out to three nautical miles when it hands over jurisdiction to the feds, who then control the fisheries out to the 200 nautical mile zone. But it appears the feds want more control over the states. They're working with state and Northern Territory governments at the ministerial and senior official levels on further opportunities for a collaborative cross-jurisdictional approach, they say, to improve fisheries management arrangements. Read here another intervention. Didn't the first one work well in the Northern Territory with the Indigenous communities? So here comes the type of spin to get every state to enforce a recreational fishing licence. To maximise the net economic returns to the community through fishing, the government says it requires adequate data and the use of appropriate methods to value the national economic contribution of the individual sectors. That's code for licence, surveys, data mining to enforce more restrictions and to allocate shares differently. And here it comes at the Commission's Recommendation 2.4, where it says all governments should consider a move to trading of access rights between the commercial and recreational sectors in the longer term for suitable, higher value fisheries. The Federal Government, which supports this move, says it is currently developing a resource sharing policy. The policy will consider the practicalities of intersectorial trading. But who determines what the suitable higher value fisheries are? Southern bluefin tuna, prawns, rock lobster, blue swimmer crabs, King George whiting. They don't commit themselves yet. Recommendation 4.1 says the federal government should consider licensing of recreational fishers if it takes on greater responsibility for the management of recreational catch. The government's response is to support it in principle. Once a licence is in, then there's no control over the annual increases in those licences, such as recently happened in Western Australia. The increases will be put into fisheries management. Basically, this means fishers will pay for what basically is a government responsibility to fund its own departments. It's a discriminatory tax only on recreational fishers. Like Thor's hammer, the federal government also supports the recommendation that it should consider implementing harvest tagging or restricted licences to manage valuable at-risk species when conventional management controls such as bag and size limits are ineffective in meeting harvest allocations. And here is the clincher that indicates the feds are flexing their muscles to get control of recreational fishers with its statement that it is working with State and Northern Territory fisheries managers on options for shared fisheries management arrangements for recreational fisheries, including, in limited circumstances, a direct role for the Australian Government in managing specific stocks. It also supports stiffer penalties for recreational fishers breaking the law. In order to get the data on recreational fishers so they can be specifically targeted, the Federal Government will run a National Recreational Fishing Survey in 2018. Remember the saying, he who has control of the information has control of the population. You have been warned. Just remember the results of the last state-based survey, the rubbery data that has been slammed as unscientific but is used in all fisheries propaganda as a flagship in the world's best managed fisheries. What bunkum! Next time you're out fishing, take a selfie so your grandkids can see what a recreational fisher looked like when they visit the museum in 20 years time.